We're starting today with a look at the stories making the headlines. Uh, yeah, to do that, we're joined by former Home Secretary Alan Johnson and journalist Camilla Tamane. Good morning to you both. Good morning, how are you? Great to see you, by the way. Good to see you. Um, I was kind of thinking back your, your days in the big seat, in the hot seat, Gordon Brown's government, Tony Blair's government. Yeah, yeah. How long ago was all that? Uh, about 14 years ago, when the electorate dispensed with our, with our services. <laughs> so I write books now. Good <laughs> yeah. stuff. Uh, not missing the stress of it too much, particularly. No, not at all. Day, no, I'm glad I'm not the Chancellor today. I know, uh, it's a big day, isn't it? It's Budget a big day, day. Particularly now, because there's lots of chat about elections on the horizon. I know, it's strange, isn't it, that... I mean, I was saying to Alan earlier, we think it's a bit weird that they've obviously, what we would call in the trade, pitch-rolled this idea of a 2% cut to... a 2p cut to the national insurance contributions that we make every year out of our pockets, because if that is the so-called rabbit out of the hat, then it's interesting that they've kind of shown their hand early yeah. to continue with the magic analogies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think it is a make-or-break budget for Jeremy Hunt, Rishi Sunak and the Conservatives. They've got backbenchers absolutely clamouring for tax cuts. It's no secret that we've got the highest tax burden since the Second World War. People are wanting to keep more of their earnings. And so the pressure's on, but the messaging from the Chancellor's very much been prudence first. Yeah. We must put the national interest first. If he's going to promise a tax cut, I think he's going to try and promise it in 2025, but I'm not sure that's going to work, Alan. Oh, no, he's going to promise, according to the press. And the Treasury confirmed this yesterday, unheard of, that the Treasury confirms a budget leak of a 2p reduction in national insurance. It's going to happen. So we know it's going to happen because the Treasury have told us it's going to happen. But they're saying they'll implement it in April, which I think is what's been the main mm. fueling of speculation. Are they going to go to the country early? Are, is there going to be a May general election with this cut in national insurance, not in the basic rate of income tax. Well, that yeah, might sorry, be another when I talk about... Wh so I'm saying yeah. that on income tax, I think he's going to yeah. say, we must be prudent, there isn't yeah. enough money in the coffers, that fiscal headroom, we thought at the beginning of the year we're going to have 30 billion, now the Office of Budget Responsibility says it's 12.8, therefore we can't afford to give an income tax cut. But what I'm saying is, as well as this NI reduction, what he's going to try and argue today is that the tax cut will come in 2025. Ah, I'm I see. saying yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's a no, risky absolutely. strategy because people look at it and go, well, no, we want it now. And why does this guarantee electoral success? I mean, I think a May election is a really bad idea for a number of reasons. First of all, I don't think necessarily that people will instantly thank the Conservatives for giving them back the money that they've taxed from him, them in previous years, right? Second of all, there are some seats where they haven't even advertised for a candidate, let alone selected one. I don't think they're ready. Having said that, as you pointed out, Alan, it would at least, least catch reform out because I don't think reform have selected all of their candidates and they would be rushed into an election yeah. in May very much so, wouldn't they? Yeah. Sorry, in simple terms, the thinking is that the Conservatives are making these tax cuts, pushing for an early election to ride a bit of feel-good that might come off the back of it, so it should benefit... Yes. The Conservatives more than Labour, is that the... Th the well, thinking? I'll give you the... the I agree with Camilla that it, it looks nonsense because the Tories' poll rating is the lowest since Ipsos Mori started taking polls. They're on 20%. Labour is on 47%. That's not normally the time you'd call an election. Is it the worst but ever? The worst ever since Ipsos Mori started. I think that's right. since 1978. 1978. Uh, when I was born, incidentally. Were you? Yes. I thought you were born much later. Oh, that's kind of you, Aaron. Oh, Thank you. Once a politician, always <laughs> a politician. politician. <laughs> so, uh, element of surprise. Uh, people still remember this reduction in national insurance. They had another reduction in national insurance earlier this year, so they can claim that's £900 a year yep. we're putting into workers' pockets. Um, they... Uh, things are going to get worse, not better. The economy, by all the projections, is going to get worse, so they'll be in a worse position if they push it back. Um, so this story that's in the Telegraph that may be this precise... And maybe he'll pull a rabbit out of the hat, a genuine yeah. 2p uh, off the basic rate of income tax. Who knows? But I, I think there is at least an argument that they're going to go early. But it's not about winning an election for the Tories now. It's about maybe just trying to save some seats, surely. Oh, the numbers be are well, I mean, no, they'll I still think, be... I think the Prime Minister is convinced they can still do it. Because really? Because the talk inside Downing Street is about this sort of 20 to 25% of don't knows. So, what we've seen at the by-elections is huge swings to Labour, admittedly, but we haven't got... I, I think you might agree with this, Alan. The feeling around Keir Starmer is not the same as 97 around Tony Blair. There aren't people lining the streets going, we want Starmer. 
It's just not the same vibe. What you've got is a low turnout at recent by-elections because Conservative voters are really disgruntled and they're deciding where to place their vote, but they're not all saying, we're going to give it to Labour. A lot of them are saying, I might not turn out unless they give me something to vote for, or I might vote for reform. I mean, also, we can't discount the Liberal Democrat vote going up. I know they've been kind of completely conspicuous by their absence from the political scene lately, but people who are wavering in the middle, who can't face voting Tories or indeed the Reds, naturally will go to the Yellows. Yeah. Well, talking of the Prime Minister, he's, um, he's had a lovely <laughs> little interview with uh, Grazia, um, with his lovely wife, Akshata, and um, they've given an insight into their daily lives as, as billionaires, and they still do... <laughs> they still <laughs> do the daily chores. I can't believe it. We'll have a little look. That's very good. Definitely, <laughs> Rishi's the better cook. Although yes, not, I do a lot. No, you have less time, but I, you're definitely the better cook. I'm stricter when it comes to things related to school. Like everything everything else, else. I am stricter. Definitely, Rishi. That is not your strong point. No. no. I mean, it bugs me, so I actually sometimes come up back into the flat from the office after we've all left to make the bed yes. to make because it's one of I'll be irritated skills. if it's not One of made. his special skills. You know, they, they have been criticised in the past for being a, a tiny little bit out, out of touch. <laughs> Do you think this is going to help them, you know, reflect in the public eye as being a little bit more in touch, Camilla? I feel this... I like this kind of stuff, and I think we could all recommend to Downing Street that, in general, politicians that seem as if they're a bit more real, a bit more human, that they show their personal sides of their lives, you know, I think they probably do fare better. However, the Prime Minister just looks really awkward and I find it intriguing because when he was on with Rylan and I think it was Emma, he came here and in the um, interval, so to speak, at that point where we chat between the break, he was a completely different person. He was very much relaxed. He was saying to Rylan how he enjoyed his Radio 2 show and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. He was like absolutely man of the people. But when the cameras then rolled, he's back to this kind of technocratic, schoolboyish, I was the head prefect at... Winchester-type personality, and I just... I think he looks really uncomfortable doing well, personal. Right. I think it, I, I think they ought to let them off doing things like that. I, mm. The poor Sunaks. Theresa May and her husband, you remember they did an interview oh, yes. about him taking out the rubbish? <laughs> and I mean, it, just let, let them off. I've got nothing but sympathy for them in these situations, cos really, although it's trying to depict them as human beings. It just comes do you across... Think, do you honestly think he loads a dishwasher and makes the beds? I, I don't know. I actually think <laughs> he does. I, do, I, think I, he I, does. I genuinely think I he's do... someone who loads the dishwasher very, yeah. very carefully. Yeah. What, what I do know is <laughs> I've, I've known each of the last seven Prime Ministers and many other uh, leaders, and they are all very different in public to what they are in private. They don't all... Don't we need the and, wife and, and husband and some, thing? You know, balance. perhaps it's you as TV presenters. You're different on the telly as... But then don't, you don't are. they need... <laughs> yeah. No, okay. not really. Okay. Zero difference. <laughs> and Zero. don't you agree that they do have to sort of show a little bit of this side of themselves? You know, not David like Cameron was yeah. quite successful yeah, because yeah. people saw him as a family man who really clearly loved his wife. We had the whole intrigue around Tony and Sherry's relationship. You know, Sarah Brown and Gordon Brown, you know, had a lot of sympathy because of some of the tragedy that had befallen them because they lost their daughter. We do need these but little Camilla, insights. none of them did this kind of awkward to camera having a chat with each other as though the cameras weren't there. Mm. Oh, do you load the dish? Oh, he loads the dish. Mm. Tony Blair didn't do that. They David did Cameron didn't do that. Things. They did other stuff. They did stuff yeah, like... fine. And they did mumsy yeah. stuff, but I, I see your point. Also, that discussion looks like a conversation you'd have at a dinner party followed by a huge row in the car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you said... <laughs> Because <laughs> it's tense. He struck me actually. I could see him going up and fixing things. Yes. He's a bit of a fixer. Mm. I uh, liked his you know, wife, though. A, a, I a bit of a control came... freak, yeah. maybe a little bit. I did you his... see that? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I did. But don't you think his wife's quite sparky? I mean, she made that appearance at the Conservative Party conference quite su a surprise last autumn where she gave that speech introducing him. I mean, I think there's clearly sometimes you can tell a lot about a man by their wife, and I would say that she's Pretty feisty and formidable well, character. Well, talking about Sparky and pretty feisty, can we talk about Uncle Gary in the Big Brother uh, house? Can we call him Bunkle? Because he Bunkle. calls himself Bunkle because that means bad it's Uncle. one of the many names uh, we could probably call him at this yeah, early stage. similar yes. to Bunkle. Are they yes. close? Are they close? Does she know her Uncle Gary on the I level the that he clue, thinks they do? I think the clue was in Gary having to admit to his housemates that he hadn't spoken to Kate in quite some time. How long? Well, I mean, he is Carol with an ease, her mother's brother, 
He has been a little bit on the outside of things. He's got in trouble with the law in the past. Right. I don't think he needs permission to go on Celebrity Big Brother, to be honest. And so far, he hasn't said anything disparaging about Kate. In fact, he's been overwhelmingly positive about She's his niece. She's been on for one night, Camilla. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, if it, I don't know. When they're going to start rolling out the booze and well, stuff, then it could become a bit more loose-lipped, I listen, don't know. Listen, my son, Clark, is the world expert on Big Brother. He was there outside the Big Brother house on Monday and he reckons that he'll be the first one. Gary will be the first one evicted. I, do so I don't feel think like he'll be there long enough, which Kate Middleton might well be breathing a sigh of relief over. Do you not feel he is in there to impart a message and defend his side of the family a little bit? He's starting to plant little stories. Have a look at this from last night. Well, I love Louis Walsh because he's a very smart man. I don't know, his mind has gone... Prrr, he's making up his <laughs> mind right there at that yeah, moment. Yeah. Um, planting little stories, slowly chipping away, perhaps. Camilla's the expert on this. Well, I can't see the palace. Colluding with him. No, to are they worried are you about him? That he's been planted no, no, on bed. his own back, maybe on to get back, back in with the family. But then he's not yeah. said anything that surprising. You know, mm. he considers that Harry and Meghan have thrown the royal family under a bus. I think quite a few people would concur with that. He considers that the dynamic between William and Harry and Kate changed when Meghan came on the scene. Yeah. Most people can recognise that sometimes happens when somebody marries into a family. Um, and actually, you know, he's not really saying anything more revelatory than Harry and Meghan have ever said about their nearest and dearest. Is there a, is there a worry at the palace about Uncle probably. Harry at all? There's probably a little bit of concern because the royals would rather just to leave these things unsaid. Having said that, when Harry and Meghan went on Oprah and did Netflix and did Spare, they, the royals weren't really offered a right of reply. Right. Gary's entitled to his opinion, isn't he? Yeah. What do we think of yeah. Gary? I mean, Gary's quite fun. He's good for the newspapers, let's be honest. Alan. I mean, there's a few headlines out of Gary. I don't like the look of him. <laughs> is my uh, is my <laughs> brief opinion. I'd feel, feel you. Feel you. Um, um, <laughs> our next story now. Um, Sir Michael Gambon leaves nothing to long-term uh, lover. So um, he's handed over 1.5 million to his wife and left nothing to his long-term girlfriend, who he actually has two teenage sons with. Uh, the Dumbledore actor, who appeared in six Harry Potter movies, famously shared his time between Lady Anne Gambon and his set designer Philippa Hart, who was actually with him for 25 years. Years. Like, Alan, do you think this is fair? I think it'd be more of a story if he left all his money to his mistress and left nothing to his wife. Mm. But it's so I think he's years. done it the right way round. Yeah, these are very personal things. You don't, you don't know if there's not some kind of message in there that his wife will then hand on some money to the, for the two sons. Uh, I don't know. Um, but I was expecting that to be the story. I mean, in, in France, you might well, you know, it wouldn't be a scandal. In France, it might be... Uh, the story that they left everything to the mistress and yes. not to the wife. But at least I'm glad he did it. Do you right know what? Way. After 25 years and two children, two teenage children, I, I would be really put out if I was being called the mistress still. Yeah. Well, but, but he didn't marry her. He didn't yeah, marry her, yeah, just, which like, means... It's a complicated she is. arrangement. <laughs> it is. Yeah, and his it. wife was aware of it and, you know, although yeah. there was a difficult time, she was supportive of yeah. him. In Very this French, yeah. Lifestyle. Well, there you are. So, Can yeah. I say something slightly controversial? Yes. And I know that 1.5 million is a huge amount of money. At the same time, I expected his wealth to be a bit higher because of the Harry Potter yeah. franchise. I mean, Dumbledore, that's like a major role to play in, I think, one of the most successful kind of box office smashes ever. Maybe all the money went to Mate, Harry and Hermione not, and Rupert. Yeah, exactly. While he was still alive, he he looked yeah. after his son. He liked sports Actually, cars, he had two. He had yeah. two families to pay two for. Two families, yeah. two houses, lots of sports yeah. cars. Yeah. Why do we always have to make estates public, actually, as well? Why do we always have to release these amounts? I, I never uh, understood that. Well, royal estates, of course, aren't made public, Craig. Oh. No. That's a debate for another day.